Bonjour et bienvenue to the very heart of the West Indies, where we shall be showing you Ponant's beautiful ship, Le Dumont de Ville, sailing the Caribbean Sea in the most exhilarating 13-day island hopping experience that can possibly be had in this beautiful part of the world. In this, the final part of our amazing adventure, we say hello to some of the marine locals, attempt to figure out how this ship can have windows underwater, witness the mysterious green flash, and experience a beach barbecue that goes horribly wrong. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It's the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn your knees Oh hear the angel voice says Oh night divine the night and Christ was born Oh night Well, good morning from Grenada. I think I've been a bit subtle with the edit this morning because, ta da, that's the real view. <laughs> no, it's actually, no, it's not, it's that. <laughs> Today I have my build your own, build your own baguette. BYOB, build your own baguette. Never registered that. And we've got eggs Benedict and chocolate chip pancakes on order. Oh my goodness, look at the chocolate chips in that. I mean, they're like those Cadbury's giant buttons. Do what eggs Benedict look like? It's nice. Oh, that looks lovely. Where's the egg? Where's the egg? Look at that. There's something out of a food porn film, that is. Oh my goodness. Whenever I see chocolate chip on the menu, everything else just gets like blurred. Well, we just got back to our suite and we got this lovely invite to the captain's table tonight. <laughs> Ye gods, I don't think I'm posh enough for this. Today we didn't get off in Grenada because we've been here before and to be honest, we wanted to have a bit of a rest and enjoy the ship while it was super quiet with everyone off. I have to mention the Blue Eye Lounge again because the age-old question is, with the windows being underwater and situated near the bow of the ship, it would stand to reason that the windows when we're at full speed would take a bit of a hammering. So with that in mind, just how thick is that glass? Well, here's how thick it is. There are 18, yes, 18 layers of laminated glass here, and if you shine an iPhone torch onto it, you can see how thick it is. I think we're pretty safe, don't you? Fast forward to afternoon tea, which is served every day on board in Le Nemo Main Lounge, and each day has a different culinary theme, and each day these delicious bite-sized morsels are accompanied by a backdrop of easy listening tones by one of the singers or musicians. It's all just so, well, subtly refined. Sunset was yet another stunner, and this time we even saw the fabled green flash, 
an incredibly rare sight when the very last sliver of sun goes to a green colour due to a very special alignment of certain atmospheric conditions resulting in some mind-bending light refraction shenanigans. It really made my day seeing this. Have you ever seen a green flash? Leave us a comment please and tell us when and where we'd love to know. That evening in Le Nemo we had a caviar tasting and this was a step up from any other tasting we've had before. Look at that sashimi accompaniment. You might think ultra luxury cruising is all about the big three but Ponant really stands shoulder to shoulder with those cruise lines. We are being newly impressed with something every passing day. Okay. We've spent a day on board and now we're itching to get back out there and explore the next exciting island. See you in the morning. This morning we were out on deck in time to watch the magic happen. Take a look at this. Good morning, good morning from the Dumont de Ville. Today we are, I don't know where we are today. Tobago Cays. Tobago Cays. In the Grenadines. In the Grenadines. We're going to try and do some snorkeling today, aren't we, Bunny? Yep. And um, the Zodiac's all set up, ready to go. It's a tiny, tiny little beach with nobody on, nobody on the beach at all. Have one little beach bar. Nobody lives on the island. It's completely unhoused. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> wow, you should have seen that. Yeah, kite surfer. Okay. Good morning, Hello. Captain. Bonjour, Monsieur. How are you today? Very, very well. Thank you. Okay, so we're one of the first on the island. Look at it, it's amazing. Okay, we found ourselves a little spot under a palm tree. We just gotta be careful that the coconuts don't fall on us and cause horrific life-changing injuries. Um, but apart from that, it's amazing. Look, it's just a beach with palm trees and yachts and obviously live lobsters for lunch. Wow. There's a lovely little tiki bar there. We didn't bring any money with us at all. We're so useless at planning. Right, let's get our snorks gear on, see what we can see. Thank you. 
One of the most common things people ask us is, what are the cameras you use for filming? We use a variety of things, but underwater is always a bit of a problem because it's just not as good, if you want the truth. So what we've done, we've done a special little video. Please watch that video because if you're coming somewhere like this or Galapagos or anywhere at all that involves any sort of snorkeling or underwater, any sort of shallow diving activities, it's a really useful video to watch. And if you want to see more travel tech, please leave a comment. Anyway, I've waffled enough now. Let's go and find Helen, she should have dried off by now, and get the Zodiac back to the ship. And get prepared for tonight, and the captain. <gasps> We couldn't film the captain's table for obvious reasons of privacy and respect, but here's a few shots of my meal. I couldn't film Helen's because she was the other side of the table, putting her Duolingo French tuition to good use. We had a very special evening. Sitting with the captain is more likely on a small ship cruise, but it's not guaranteed. If you do get invited, it's a treat, so don't be shy, give it a go. Well, good morning cruisers from Meru Island in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Last night we had a lovely captain's table, so that was a real privilege. Although I must confess, they did keep topping up our wine glasses with some lovely wine. And I must also confess that I probably had one, just the one too many vodka martinis. So today probably is going to have to be a bit of a slow day, but that's a good thing because it's a beach day today, so perfect excuse to slow down, don't you think? Despite all of Pont's meticulous planning that would make this beach day perfect, a free bar, a lobster barbecue, a massage area, sunbeds, towels, a friendly dog, even a steel band playing festive favourites, the weather wasn't exactly going along with the plan. Hmm, not being pessimistic, but that doesn't look like sunny weather coming across. Despite this attempt by Mother Nature to scupper the barbecue, and believe us, it was a close call. The brilliant band played on through the torrents. The rum kept flowing, meaning the guests kept dancing, and the chefs kept grilling those huge, sweet, delicious lobsters. Well, that's good. I think this calls for rum. Time for some rum. Lovely, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. And cheers to the weather. Don't let it get you down. Actually, it's quite nice. Cheers. Oh my, what an absolute joyous and memorable day we were having. I am not kidding guys, that's the biggest lobster I have ever had at a beach lobster barbecue. Look at that. It is a monster, it fills the whole plate. Wow, that and the rum. 
this is the best beach barbecue ever, despite the rain. So, the rain has finally stopped and oh my goodness, look at this barbecue. I have never seen, and I've said this before in a <laughs> previous clip, like this, like... the lobsters are ginormous and fabulous. I need to tuck in. Let's go. Look at that. Oh. We have desserts. Oh, Helen's finished those. I don't know what that, that part, that sort of frangipan type just looks amazing. Mm. As the only mad fools that were eating out. In the rain. In the rain. Mm. The ship's photographer came and took a video of us. This is a little came. bit embarrassing. <laughs> I'm not sure I look my best. <laughs> but if you come from the UK, you know all about rain. Rain does not put you off, does it? Pers well, if it's rain and warm, I mean, what is there rain, to rain about? Rain plus warmth. I mean, it's not even rain. No. Is it? Hello, you. Do you like some lobster? Oh. Sit. What's sit in French? Sit. What? Oh, it's an English guy. Well, he doesn't know the word sit, does he? Let's sit. We've got a beach barbecue. We've got the Caribbean Sea. What more could you want? Anyway, cheers. I'll tell you what, rum makes the rain a hundred times better. So most of the guests have gone back to the ship. They took half the barbecue back to the ship so people could have it on the ship. We decided to just stay and we stood at the bar and had a nice rum punch with the bar mm. team who were amazing. Yeah. And now we just had this most delicious lunch. Whatever we'll lay on the beach. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, so we've had lunch and it's still a mild threat of rain. It's a mild one. The odd drop just to remind us that it's there, but lots of people have gone back to the ship. So it's probably like, I would say a third of the people left. And um, well, we're cleaning up, aren't we? There's only a third of the people left. Three times as much rum three times as much wine and three times as much lobsters so we are pretty happy with our Caribbean beach day are we not in the Le Meru it's not Le Meru is it Meru Island we love you despite the rain Tonight, the entertainment team brought the show to us in Le Nemo Lounge. What an absolutely brilliant day it's been, and it's all included in your cruise. How good is that? Good morning on the final full day of our voyage, which fills me with incredible sadness, I've got to say. We have arrived at Pigeon Island. I don't think there's many pigeons on it, to be fair. The gumpf says gumpf. Do you use the word gumpf? It's a British word for 
thing. Well, this is the Gump, the daily program. The Gump says, linked to St. Lucia by a sand causeway, Pigeon Island has been designated national park since 1979. Uh, blah, 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 pleasant walks, blah, 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 tropical veg, blah, 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 magnificent tree field gardens, blah. You will be irresistibly drawn to the two pretty sandy beaches. I think that's them there. Nestled on the southern side and bathed by crystal clear waters. This bit draws me in. While snorkeling, be sure to explore the underwater world that is teeming with life. Teeming with life! That's what I'm here for. A last day snorkel fest. But first, breakfast. There is a thing in photography called the golden ratio. And I think Ponon have actually applied a golden ratio to the amount of chocolate chips to pancake and pecans and bananas to pancake here. The perfect golden ratio. Mm. Degrees and sunny, just the way I always wanted. Tall but I got to upside. So we've come back into the National Park because just outside the National Park, yeah, there's sunbeds and stuff like that, but they want, uh, they want to charge you for the sunbeds, obviously, but then they, they want to upsell. So we're back in here because we only bought like $10 with us because we wanted to get a drink. We're back inside the National Park and we spoke to somebody in the National Park and they said the best place to snorkel is one of these two beaches. So we've got this beach here. It's like a private beach, like we've got our own beach. Isn't that amazing? A couple of sunbeds, which we hire from the park. They're only $3 each, I think. Look at that, view of the ship. Time for some snorkeling. <laughs> I couldn't do any snorkeling because the water was far too murky. Yeah, they've had storms here, so obviously kicked up a lot of stuff off the floor, and it was just nah, impossible. You couldn't see anything. There's all bits floating around. You don't know how deep it is, and you don't know what's going on. So, oh, look at that! Isn't that lovely? Ooh. Yeah, how gorgeous is that? So we're just sitting here watching Harry the Heron. <laughs> Crab man building his crabby house with his one single crabby claw. Do you know what reference Crab Man is to a TV program? Please leave a comment below. I think we might have to re edit the fact that we've got the whole beach to ourselves because a catamaran has just blown up and just absolutely destroyed the beach. Look, we were having such a nice, peaceful time on. There you go. Dad's life. Dad's life. <laughs> the snorkeling was utter rubbish. Whatever happened to the crystal clear waters and an underwater world teeming with life? Okay, so we can't blame Pigeon Island. It was the stormy weather that had basically churned up the seabed. So the final day snorkeling was literally a washout. This is fresh swordfish. Literally out of the sea, just here. Doesn't that look amazing? Look at that, that's the swordfish. Our final stop of the cruise was further up the coast of St Lucia and one of the most photographed locations in the Caribbean. The world famous UNESCO World Heritage Twin Peaks of the Pitons. Whilst others got off to explore, we couldn't resist staying on to witness one of the finest sunsets of the whole cruise. What a way to finish!
There followed the captain's farewell party where we had a crew parade, lots of champers and a farewell dinner that stands pride of place at the very top of our chart of farewell feasts. We've probably mentioned that Ponant does gastronomy that surpasses almost every cruise line we've ever been on, and given the size of the ship, that achievement is even more impressive. There's the end of this vlog series, but do stay on right till the end, as we have a few offcuts and bloopers you might enjoy. Thank you for watching, and au revoir for now. said we weren't ever going to eat in front of camera. I'm Sorry. <laughs> it's moving a bit like we don't like dislike each other that much. <laughs> Come on, Sam. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I actually quite like you. The souls are brave. Take to see in a lost and cave. But oh, the souls are brave. Take to snorkel. Ich würde die F, ist es F, Wheat, Neuf, Wheat, Neuf, äh, Wheat, Dezember. And when she shines, she really shows you all she can. It's a bit rude, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, I think the 80s. <laughs> Now, would it? You're quite all right, honey. I think she's having an um moment. Zen. Are you zen, honey? Oh. Yeah, but do you have one leg? No, not today. <laughs> I'm puffing like a, not like a puffin. Do puffins puff? That that there is like super duper hot. Super hot. I shall name this the nut funnel. Helen's trying out the swimmy thing. Is it's good though? I need to know this. I'm gonna come down and do this. Disappointed to see that although we haven't got one. Some lucky person is getting a couple of nut funnels tonight. So, we are escaping the celebrating French. <laughs> are you getting on a tender to go ashore, have a drink in a bar um, on the beautiful island of Beckway. Mm. Who needs football anyway when you can have Perrier? So Helen's made me drink. <laughs> Helen's drink more water. Oh, there's some more water. Helen's telling me to drink the water. Because the very strong rum before lunchtime is a bad thing, apparently. But you can't see straight. You just said you can't see straight. Is it cold, man? <laughs> oh, welcome to the Caribbean Sea. We are currently watching the match, England versus France. <laughs> All the French supporters are in the theatre watching mm -hmm. it. So we've sort of skulked out here into the main lounge uh, to watch it. Um, thinking it was the politically correct thing to do. And um, I made the best team win. What's your prediction, Helen? Well, I'm hoping that England are going to win 2-1, I reckon. 2-1, OK. Um, I predict That's that. Be quite I predict that we will get out of here alive. To miss.